Okay, everyone. Well, first of all, I think I'd like to find out um, a little bit about you. Whether, first of all, whether this is your first webinar with us. So I wonder if you could, could launch that poll. You'll see a poll come up on your screen, um, and it's your chance to interact with us and give us an idea. So you can just vote on the poll, and we'll find out how many people are new to the whole webinar thing. Oh, here we go. Everyone's very quick today. 75% <laughs> of people have already voted. 77% of people have voted. Okay. Well, 65% of you have not have not experienced a webinar before. So I think I ought to. I ought to just go over the webinar system for your benefit and to remind those that have been on a webinar with us before. Okay, so the title is Treating Trauma with Shiatsu and TCM. And what will happen is um, I'm going to be presenting the webinar. Paul Lumberg, who's one of my colleagues at the Shiatsu College at New Energy Work, he's going to be helping me out with the online course, which starts on Wednesday. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Okay, this webinar lasts for an hour and we'll just um, go into the welcome screen. Okay, I'm going to go over how the webinar works, just briefly for those of you who, who it's a first experience, welcome. Um, I'll have a little, we'll have a little look at the online course as well, just in case you are interested in joining that. It starts on Wednesday, goes for five weeks and we'll obviously go into more detail on the themes of this webinar. We've got, I think, is it seven places left now? We've got 12 places, we've got seven places left. So it's half full now, and I expect it'll probably fill over the next couple of days. And then what we'll do is we'll give you an overview of treating trauma with Shiatsu and TCM. And hopefully that'll um, start you thinking about how you can, how you can work with, with stress and trauma using Shiatsu. Okay, so first of all, how you can participate, and this is a great thing about the webinar system, you can really take part in this, and you already have, because we've already done a poll, so that's one of the main ways that we can um, find out what you're thinking, and we've already had one, we've got plenty more in the pipeline uh, for this webinar. Now you'll find that you've got a control panel, and you can click the little orange arrow to hide and make it open your... Um, control panel. You're no doubt listening to me on either your computer uh, speakers or on a headset. And you'll find this little box which says questions. Now, if you've got any questions, you can type any questions in and then Shakur will keep an eye on them and she'll feed them to me. And we'll see if we can deal with the questions as we go along. Um, now, there's also another way that you can do that. Uh, you can also put your hand up and you'll see there's a little hand icon. Um, if you click on that, that means we'll see your hand go up here in the uh, studio. And that means if you've got a good audio system, like if you've got a, uh, particularly if you've got a headset, like a Skype headset, um, then you can actually go on air live and we can actually hear your question, not only typed. So if you want to ask an actual question with audio, you can do that. And that's really a lot of fun if you'd like to do that. You need to have a pretty good connection. You need to have a really have a microphone and headset for it to work well. OK, so bear that in mind. OK, so we've still got lots of people arriving, um, but I'll just go on and just have a just a brief overview of what the online course is like. First thing that we need to emphasize about the online course is it's asynchronous. So what does that mean? Well, that means you can do it anytime you like, which is pretty important for our online courses because we have people from all over the world, um, literally from Australia, South America, you know, Africa. We've had people from all over the world on the courses. And with all the time zone differences, the only way we can really work them is in an asynchronous way. So you don't have to worry at all about uh, when you do the work, when you do the activities because you can just fit it in wherever you like in the week. They're five weeks long. So what we do is we set some objectives for each week. We use, um, you know, a good course design system. So we have clear objectives. We then have a range of resources and we use a lot of video and audio. We like to get you away from the computer as much as we can. We get you working on your clients. 
um, and accessing audio which you can download onto an iPod, take away from the computer or watch the videos. And then we give you assignments. So you have a little task to do each week, which usually works means working with your clients on a particular thing. Um, and then what happens then is you post your experience onto a forum and that's where it really takes off the course because that's when you get tutor and peer feedback. The forums are very, very active and we get this great vibe going across the world of uh, Shiatsu therapists working together and supporting each other. So that's how the online courses work. And here's a little peek at what it looks like if you haven't been to newenergywork.com. It's actually not really a website as such. It's a virtual learning environment. That's why it looks a little bit different from a normal website. Um, it's actually like an online classroom. It's a piece of software that's designed to do that. And this is the home page. What happens when you click into the course is you see this. And this is what a course looks like. And you'll see that it's really just a bunch of uh, links, really. You'll see that's week one, which we're putting together now. We're just finalizing the course of design of week one. Uh, you'll see there's an overview. There's a couple of videos, some fantastic videos that we've got there about some um, leading experts on treating trauma. And then we've got notes for you, audio. And then we've got an assignment, which is based around a discussion. That's a typical structure of a, of, of a week on one of the online courses. OK, and here's an example of one of the resources. This is uh, an embedded video that we've got. Very, very interesting video. And it's actually that the um, lesson is open. If you after the webinar, if you want to have a look at it, it's actually open to guests at the moment. And we keep the course uh, open to guests until we fill it. So you can have a look around and see what you're going to be doing. OK, so here we are. I think we could do with another poll. What have we got? What have we got? <laughs> Let's see. Let's find out. Should we find out a little bit about everyone? Um, how about, um, let's see, how about where they are? Should we ask them where they are? Let's find out where you are. So perhaps you can just let us know where you're, where you're actually from. Oh, wow. Oh, we've got quite a lot from Australasia this time. I wonder if any of them are my students that I've met in Melbourne just the other week. Probably. Yeah. If they are, welcome. And thank you very much for your interest in my work. I had a great time in Melbourne just recently. I've just got back. OK, 87 percent voted. Shall we close it? Oh, look, we've got quite a big majority in Europe and Scandinavia. We've got some from across the pond. Hello for those of you in North and South America. And and we've got two percent from Asia. Yeah, I wonder where I wonder where they're from. Oh Paul's come. Oh that's fantastic. Hello. Paul, hi. Yeah, just um, arrived. It's taken me about five minutes to download the um, the link the and facility. everything. Yeah, yeah. The link and everything. Oh, it's... I don't know why, but here I am. Uh, Oh, it's great. It's great to hear you. Well, we've got a fantastic turnout, Paul. We had 125 people register for this webinar. It's our most popular one yet. Wow, so that's really interesting. Isn't it's it? great. That's and we've just, we've just found out where they're all from. We've got 88% from Europe and Scandinavia, 3% from North and South America, 2% from Asia and 7% from Australasia. So we've got a pretty yeah. good global spread. Yeah. I'm, look I'm looking at that now. Oh, you can yeah. see the poll, can you? Fantastic. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. cool. Um, should we find out one other thing? Should we find out what um, what everyone's up to, whether they're students or practitioners? I think we've got a poll for that, haven't we, Shigura? Yeah. Here we go. Let's yeah. find out who you are. Are you a Shiatsu student, Shiatsu practitioner, practitioner and teacher, another practitioner or therapist or somebody else altogether? <laughs> Maybe you can let yeah. us know. So. How are you, Cliff? Okay. I'm absolutely fine, Paul. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Great. Whereabouts are you, Paul? Are you in? Are you in? Uh... I'm in Tenerife. You're in Tenerife. I'm in Tenerife yeah. with a, um, quite strong rain outside. In oh really? All oh, right. Wow. Oh. Uh, sometimes we get uh, when, when it never rains, but it pours here. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Great. Okay. How are we doing? Eighty-nine percent. Should we? Who have we got? Oh, we've got vast majority right. are Shiatsu practitioners. There we are. And 2% other. That's right. Quite a lot of teachers, actually. Over 10%, look, 11% are actually teachers. So that's great to have you on this. And 14% students. So that's really great. great. Okay, cool. Right. We'll just go through uh, the introduction now. We've, I've 
I've given an introduction to the webinar system and to the online courses. So we've only we're only just into the actual presentation itself right now. Um, so let's uh, have a quick look what we've got in store for you. Okay, what I thought we'd do is we'd look at the energetic actions of trauma. Mm -hmm. And then we can look a little bit at diagnosis and how we can spot signs of trauma, the classic signs. Um, look at some of the theory, the, some of the TCM and Shiatsu theory that links with some of the classic stages of, of trauma, the trauma response. And then talk a little bit about treatment from a Shiatsu perspective. And yeah. then a little bit about putting the whole thing the whole thing together um, and this is more or less the same structure that we've got on the online course as well we're going to take uh, a week for each of these sort of topics to go through these various stages yeah yeah so let's have a look at the energetic actions uh that of um of trauma and these this work i've taken from is influenced quite heavily by the work of peter levine who wrote uh the famous book Waking the Tiger which is a classic book and mm -hmm. highly recommended if you haven't already read it or if you haven't already got it on your bookshelf um, and what Peter Levine um, does in his book is he's, he's actually an animal physiologist first and foremost and he's extended that into a study of how human beings deal with trauma and stress mm. and he's identified different stages so if you imagine that you've got um, the first stage which is when you're threatened by a predator let's say you're an antelope or something you're, you're threatened by a predator uh, the first thing you've got is the adrenal response and certainly if you're an antelope you're probably going to start running so that's the first thing um, that happens now what will happen then after that is if the antelope is being pursued by the predator and it looks like they're going to be eaten. It looks like they're going to actually be uh, attacked and eaten by the lion or whatever it is that's chasing them. Then the next response is the so-called freeze response. And this is when the animal will play dead and the whole body will freeze. And the reason for that in the natural world is because the predator will then often be distracted by other animals running away. Or running around and because they're programmed to run after things they'll often go after the things that are running so the freeze response is a very good defense uh last ditch defense not quite last ditch then, yeah. because there's another one which is if the animal if the predator decides that the freeze response hasn't they're not fooled by it <laughs> and they actually do start eating the antelope then what happens or what happens then is dissociation which is again a natural thing to take you away from any of the distress and the pain of actually being eaten and attacked. Um, exactly. So you've got those natural physiological responses. Now, the interesting thing is, is that animals, um, when they go through those phases, if they get, to, if they still survive, like if the lion then gets uh, distracted and goes off, um, what happens is the animal gets up and they actually involuntarily shake and they keep shaking involuntarily, really violently, actually shaking and shaking mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. all the energy that's pent up from the trauma response has been discharged. And then they trot off quite happily. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, amazingly. It, it, it amazingly, yeah. It fast as well, doesn't it? I mean, um, is there yes. one thing that you, you sometimes see in wildlife uh, programs which sometimes go into this kind of rather distressing sort of detail of attacks and survivals and things. I've seen it yes. um, on documentaries. And um, one of the things that's very striking is that um, apparently sort of rapid um, um, recovery by this process. It's yes. very interesting um, that uh, at least in the wild, this uh, if, if the worst doesn't happen, then the return to normal is... Um, it can be remarkably efficient, which I think it might interest us yes. um, as we discuss the differences between, um, you know, this sort of uh, this raw nature kind of situation, which is a good place to start, I think. Absolutely, um, yes. And, and what happens to us more civilized folk. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because the problem with human beings is because of various pressures that we put on ourselves, either socially um, or through our own 
conditioning not to show or not to express those involuntary movements um, mm. what usually happens is that one or more of those um, energetic actions get stuck in the whole body mind system and that mm. then creates problems which come out as symptoms um, and we'll go on in a little bit and see what the, what kind of symptoms um, uh, what kind of symptoms they uh, commonly yeah, occur yes that's right yeah but what I thought we could do first of all is we could do an exercise okay and what we're going to do is we're going to um, I'm going to I'm going to talk you through I've done this several times this exercise um, and mm. it's uh, a way of uh, just experiencing the somatics of a stressful time in our own energy field um, and then we can go on and we can look at the actual theory and see what happens okay now just a word of warning here I mean the whole thing about trauma as we'll find out a little bit later is that one of the big developments that's happened recently in therapy is the whole idea of going back into the trauma and really re-experiencing it and everything has really um, gone out of favor in therapy because what's happened is they've discovered that actually going back into the trauma is actually re-traumatizing and you kind of get into this loop um, where experiencing it is re-traumatizing in itself mm. and that's why um, more somatic um, forms of therapy are becoming more popular and shiatsu is mm. one of them mm. and actually I on think, the um, yeah go on for yeah no no I, I i think you're right i think um it it isn't necessarily that it's traumatic i think no. that the, the uh, the this uh, sort of current wisdom about this has developed because because of the the care and skill which is needed in yes. the therapeutic situation to resolve uh, skillfully and effectively the shock state because um, of the, well because of the danger of reactivation yes because of some qualities that shock has which I want um, I wanted to bring up and sometimes I may as well now is is the fact that it's contagion um, amongst amongst um, anybody who's near enough to, uh, to pick it up, which can include the therapist. Right. So, yes. Um, so shock is contagious, uh -huh. um, as we as we humans uh, generally experience it and deal with it. Um, and for this reason, I think that uh, more careful and sort of skillful strategies have been evolved in recent years. Yes. So um, something to remember, though, that that um, it it uh, going back to the trauma isn't necessarily going to just uh, re-traumatize you. Exactly no. The same. No. Exactly. Um, but, no. That's but, right. but if it's misunderstood or mismanaged, then that's exactly what can happen. Yeah. I've yeah. got a couple of fantastic videos, by the way, Paul, that I've put on to the, the week one of the course, of, which is which are actually a whole panel of experts talking about their early mistakes um, and what right. they've learned. And it's fascinating. You have to check them out. Yeah, we'll check them out when the course gets going. OK, but anyway, let's do this exercise. So what I'd like you to do is everyone, everyone, OK, is those of you all over the world listening to this. And I'm going to do it myself. Um, is what we're going to do is we're just going to go back and we're just going to think of a stressful situation, okay? And we're going to scan our body and we're just going to see what kind of response um, that we have, okay? So, and I'll lead you into it and out of it, okay? So, first of all, let's just sit comfortably and just relax. And what we're going to do is we're going to tune into our own energy through our body. You'll need a piece of paper and a pen. So, if you want to just run and get a, a pen and paper if you haven't got one handy and what we'll do is we'll just first of all just relax and tune into how we're feeling right now so we'll get just an idea of how we're feeling any movement of energy any blocks that we can feel in our field and we're just going to quieten those down relax them down relax the breathing Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just think of a, um, um, a time where you were under stress or you had a stressful situation. And we're just going to go back to that time in a kind of relaxed way. We're just going to go back and just feel the atmosphere just enough to instigate a feeling of somatic movement in our energy. And this will just give us an experience of what that's like. Okay, and I'm doing it with you. So let's just take a moment just to go back to a stressful time.
Okay, now just keep the atmosphere for a second. Scan through your body. Okay. And just notice anywhere in your body that you might be tightening up, any urges you might have to move, any feelings or experiences that you have in your energy as you experience that atmosphere of that time. Okay. Okay. So now if you turn that feeling into an image that you can draw down or write down. Okay. And then I'm going to do it myself here. What we're going to do is we're just going to sketch the very quickly sketch or write down the main feelings that we had. Okay, we'll just stay with that for a second and then we'll just shake it out. Okay, so just just draw a quick sketch. I think I'm getting some background noise from Tenerife, Paul. I think you are. I think it's the cat. It's the cat. <laughs> Get in from the rain. <laughs> okay, so you should have done your drawings now, right? <laughs> okay, now the next stage, just to finish off the exercise, the really good thing to do is just stand up, and I'm doing it right here. We're just going to shake out. We're going to just shake out any tension or any feelings that you have any echoes of that somatic feeling that you might have in your field and just keep shaking until you've released them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a hundred people all over the world shaking up and down with headphones on. <laughs> it's quite a funny thought. <laughs> okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I thought we'd do that first. We do the practice first because in actual fact, there's um, several uh, different responses that we can identify, which comes into the diagnosis phase. And I just wondered, we just thought we'd do a poll because I think I've got a poll prepared for this, which is, you know, should we launch that one? Let's, uh, no, it's the, it's the one, uh, yeah, when you experience the atmosphere around your stressful time, did you predominantly feel? Just try that one. Yeah, okay, here we go. Look, how about this? Just think about the feeling that you had, right, when you did that exercise. Did you feel that you wanted to run away, to run? Did you feel like you were frozen or immobile? Or did you feel you were detached or distant? Or did you feel angry or aggressive? And there's also another one, just in case there's anything else, any other, other one. You can only select one, so you have to go for the predominant one. You may have felt a combination of different things. Hmm. Wow, this is really interesting. I think some people are still thinking about it just give them a bit more time to think can about I, it can i click on that too i think um, i don't know i don't know if you it. can I'm sure I'm no you're not allowed to because you're a presenter i'm afraid <laughs> you're not, no, it's only well. participants that are allowed to do it but what just out of interest while we're waiting for the votes to come in which one did you feel predominantly poor when you well um I, it's interesting because when i look at my diagram yes um, it, it helped me to see i mean it might be good for us to if you did the exercise too because that will help people to tune in to what we're on about yes and i did a quick diagram and there were a number of things first of all i became more aware of my upper body which included the chest yes and the shoulders the shoulders and outer arms particularly um and i had a feeling on the top of my head and what yes. i've done is i've drawn a little sketch of myself as a, as a torso with a uh, with arms, shoulders and head, and I put yeah. over the top of that something that felt like a lid, ah. as, if I was as if I was capped off from, yes. the, from but only in, they're not completely boxed in, but as if I was capped off from the sky and the sort of the, so I'm more aware of my upper self, but there's yes. a lid on over me. Right. But what was interesting, because we've got the, we, so I certainly didn't feel the urge to run away. No. I felt more, I felt more emotional. Yes. Really 
And so in some sense, I was detached from my legs, which I've only sketched in, in a very sort of like afterthought, sort of yes. very, very faint manner, as if I did, wasn't aware of my legs. So I yes. couldn't move them there. And so I was certainly detached in some ways and also frozen in other ways. Yes. My, my feeling was um, not angry or aggressive in this case. I think it's because I didn't get in touch. So, you know, depends on the kind of trauma that we yes. are. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Every, everybody will find that. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, let's have a look at the poll results. Yeah, this is interesting. Let's look, see. we've got 5% had the adrenal, were predominantly in the adrenal response. Um, Which is to run away. Or to run away, urge to run away, yeah. Um, or, and then, or, well, I suppose it could have, I could have also put, yeah, well, I put the aggressive one later on, didn't I? Because that's the I more think adrenal. that, that would have, you see, fight or flight is basically yes. that, that you've divided into two categories and there's more people put angry or aggressive than yes, that's right. put to yes. run away. Yeah. But the predominant one is very interesting, isn't it? Frozen yes. or immobile. It very is. Yep, that's your so-called yeah. freeze response. And then yeah. got 20% mm -hmm. detached and then 11%. Oh, that's very, yeah, very interesting. Uh, yeah, always interesting to know what the others might have been. But yes. <laughs> well, you can always... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can always write in. Yes, anyone who's got an interesting other, <laughs> you can always type them in, you know, type them in if you want to. Yeah. Okay, we better move on because we've actually half an hour in already. Okay, mm -hmm. here's, here's some uh, stuff that I took from the course material. I just edited it down a little bit. And just to show you the common symptoms, because what can happen is when you get clients in, you'll find, um, you know, you'll get, uh, you'll, you'll start to recognize uh, symptoms. And Hypervigilance is a state that can happen where the clients can't um, relax, you know, they can't relax. It would be like a sort of probably something like a kidney indeficient thing in TCM terms um, mm. or Shen disturbance. We're going, we can go on to that later with theory. Um, and they get you get this feeling of them being hyperactive or always being like uh, wired the whole time. And of course, yeah, that can I mean, lead. And this would be people who can't very easily. Um, close, they may not close their eyes, or that's if right. Start to work with them. They're very. They're, they would be just difficult to relax about giving up their limbs and things like that. I mean, this would be the the first signs yes. of that. Absolutely. But there may be yeah. a lot more. There may be a lot of other things. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And obviously, obviously, with, when they're in that state for a long period of time, you're going to get. Um, fatigue obviously and then that can also de develop into fears and phobias so you can obviously you can see that there's a definitely a kidney relation related thing here yeah, well, yeah that um, would be. Mm -hmm. okay yeah. and then the, then the freeze response which is um the most popular response in the group <laughs> what can happen with that is uh, that is that the actual freezing can be retained in the body and what what you find um is you find that whole or parts of the body actually become numb or they actually do feel frozen the connective tissue actually kind of uh, becomes almost brittle this is my experience yeah. of it anyway when working mm -hmm. it it just feels detached the meridians feel blocked and the connective tissue kind of gets uh, that's what can happen if it sets into the body and this is one of the great things i believe with shiatsu i think shiatsu is a fantastic modality for this okay and then dissociation mm -hmm. that's what you're going to what you'll notice that is you'll get a sort of vacant look they may actually say they feel and i've had that happen with several clients i actually say oh i feel like i'm detached from everything that i'm not really there and things like that and they often find that they're unable to access uh, their emotions properly so they, they almost like they're observing themselves all the time and that obviously yeah. can lead to difficulty in relationships and uh that's what can happen when the dissociation uh, gets fixed it kind of gets uh, fixed into the body mind and that's obviously uh off related we'll see it a little bit later related to the shen and the, the hun i was going to say um you mentioned the kidneys in relation to the more the adrenal things that, that first category but we're going to find quite a lot of heart symptoms um, yes exactly to this pattern in terms of traditional chinese medicine or yeah medicine. yeah absolutely yeah go on now what happens then when when you if you have all if you go through all of these you go through all of these um responses and it's um not discharged is you get this the, the incredible strength of the energy is just not discharged and so what can happen then is you can that then can turn into aggression and anger and that's 
in Chinese medicine, obviously going to be a liver related thing. And then you can get sexual problems, sexual inappropriate sexual behavior, shouting, violence, and the, uh, you know, the typical post-traumatic stress disorder type thing that you see in a lot of uh, returning soldiers and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. That aggression that's not been discharged properly. Um, yeah. We've also got another couple of patterns. I've got a few questions, have we? Okay, well, let's just get to the end of here and we'll just go, we'll go through some of the questions. Um, the other thing I've noticed as well, Paul, I don't know if you've noticed this clinically, is that depending on the person and their um, the client and their predispositions, their constitution and everything, that what can happen also is you can get this grief. The grief is undischarged as well. So that kind of gets stuck, mm. stuck into the body and you get this quite often that leads to compulsive behavior, hoarding and an and inability to let go and move on, move on in life. And I think that's yeah. just part of the whole, again, undischarged cycle of the, of the, um, the trauma response. I mean, another way to describe that um, that I've um, seen and uh, which I think is also part of the recognized sort of uh, theory as it's developed over the years is um, I, I, this, the, it's um, a particular kind of not being able to move on in life because um, it's sometimes cyclical so that people find themselves recurringly coming up against the same kind of situations, the same kind of obstacles, the same. So there's a sense very often of um, not being able to resolve things or not moving on is one thing, but there's also a sense of repetition that, yes. uh, that um, people may describe to us uh, in a clinical situation in, in their own personal terms, but it's something we can learn to look out for, that uh, people who say, even down to the fact that people say, oh, I've tried every different kind of treatment. I've tried this or that or the other treatment, and nothing seems to work for me, for example. But uh, that's a, just simply one example of how um, people have a sense of being um, unable to develop their sense of their life path or their yes. individual freedom. It's just what kind of repetition that they, they may happen to mention to us because they're, they're with us uh, trying to do the same thing again. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some questions. Should we just have a few questions before we yeah, move on? Let's have a look. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got um, Pascal. Pascal Moreau has asked, um, do you think that burnout syndrome leaves long-term traumas in the body and mind? If so, would you share your experience about that? Well, that's an interesting one in itself. And and that that's an interesting thing. Because what I've noticed, and I don't know if you agree with me, Paul, is that there's really two two ways that emotional trauma can happen. You can have a, a sudden event, like an actual accident, or you know, a sudden traumatic thing, um, and that can be maybe repeated. But you can also have long term stress, more long term low level exactly. stress that exactly. can build up yeah. and can have yeah. a similar effect, can't it? Um, exactly. I mean, from that point of view, um, the more we come to know the person through the stories they tell us and the diagnostic poses and so on, um, I, I agree that you, you find that people are, um, they're describing a situation that they're in as stressful or a situation that they, that, um, that they can't get out of. And, and I think that one of the other things is that it's, it's often sort of multi-layered. Because we yes. all know that this or that or the other thing can be stressful. And there are classic lists, aren't there, Cliff, that uh, maybe people are familiar with. But um, the, the lists in their various different forms have been developed again over the last 30 or 40 years of life stressors. Yes, um, that's which right. go from everything to sort of the things like uh, accidents and death in the family and, and uh, you know, loss of those kinds um, right through to well, divorce and, and all the things that we think of as terrible, but including things like moving, like sitting exams, like uh, um, and, and all kinds of things, which may or may not happen one at a time. I mean, a lot of people are in stressful circumstances due to their work, and they're not uh, necessarily re uh, finding a, a, a relaxed home life to discharge. They might have stress at home as well, and various other concerns. And if these go on for long enough, they begin to act like shock, um, don't they? 
That's the, yes. And that's really yep. what you're talking about. The cumulative effect of that's cumulative right. stress levels yes. is that it turns into something which is almost indistinguishable. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And burnout syndrome, as I understand it, really is just, it's just in, in a sense, that's one of the side effects of the adrenal response over a long period of time. It's like in Chinese medicine terms, it would be like kidney yin and yang depletion, wouldn't it? It's just kind of like... Um, well, it would be on that, uh, in that classical diagnostic way. But uh, I think the interesting thing is, why do we drive ourselves um, at a certain pace? Yes. Is it because... Um, you know, the kidneys are still causing us by habit and by the unconscious presence of some kind of... Um, um, what, let, let me introduce that phrase, which I, I don't know. There's, we, we can have them almost as interchangeable, I think, but the, mm -hmm. one thing is shock and how it works and how it resolves because there's a clear path for recovery in shock, yes. isn't there? Which uh, yes. has also been defined in the literature, etc. Um, and then there are these recognised... Um, possibilities that the recovery process gets itself gets stuck or frozen at different stages yes and if shock is not completed right down to its last uh, phase of resolution and we can yes. look at that too I, I know you've got all this in uh, I, there was a big similarity between the, the the kind of background material that i have prepared yes um, and what you prepared i noticed that i didn't think it was worth me duplicating that with, with some no, um, no. But, you know, as as we go on, we can introduce that in the course. But, yes. Uh, what I'm saying is that um, um, I think this drive that pushes people to deplete their kidneys through overwork on, and uh, this syndrome that we're talking about yes. um, could be an unconscious way that people have of protecting themselves. Like this, in other words, they're stuck in some kind of fight or flight mode, which might yes. be fight mode that yes. drives on to work to achieve to. Because if you slow down and your body begins to automatically go into the next stage of recovery, which yes. is more memories coming in, and um, sometimes this reactivation that we talked about at the beginning of the seminar, it begins to happen. We get to an uncomfortable place where in our relaxed state, we don't feel quite as safe as we think we should, or we no, don't feel exactly, yeah. good in ourselves. So, the way to escape from that is to yeah. go back again into yeah. a, a, a driven mode. And yeah. there we have the, that, I think that describes it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I don't know if that's a full answer to our yeah. question. But, um, yeah, I think that's good enough. One. We, we definitely can go into more detail and do the course. Just a couple of things I want to come. Um, we've got a comment from Sandy. She says, this exercise, re, the exercise we've just done risks re-traumatizing. And she says, my understanding of trauma therapy is it's essential to establish a place of safe, safety somatically mm -hmm. in the body before going near the potential trauma somatics. Yeah, and I did emphasize that when we did the exercise. And I certainly wouldn't suggest doing this exercise with your clients because we've got mm -hmm. a different way of uh, doing the similar thing which mm -hmm. we can which we can mm -hmm. deal with and someone I wants me to repeat I, uh, go on, go on. yeah someone wants me to repeat the book that i've talked about at the beginning and that's peter levine's book um mm -hmm. it's called waking the tiger and that's um and that's a classic book, really worth it. It's only a little paperback, but it's really worth doing. Mm -hmm. Je I'll just I'll clear up some of these because we've had lots of lots of questions coming in. We've got okay, Jessica. Okay, go yep. go Jessica's on. come. Jessica had stress responses have been sourced right back to pre and perinatal trauma. Will you be taking this into consideration? And that's definitely a really interesting area. We can look at that because we can do the we've got these techniques for temporal scanning where we can go back to pre birth time and um, you know, uh, scan the field. It's a kind of advanced technique, but we can scan the field and see what's happening early on. So we can we can do that. And mm. we've got a special one for you, Paul. Pascal says, thank you for sharing, Paul. So there we are. You've got a fan out there already. <laughs> okay, um, here we go. We better move on, Paul, because we've only got 20 minutes left. And we've got lots of slides. Let's, let's, um, let's have a look. I'm happy. We may not uh, we may not have time to go through a lot of this in in a great deal of detail, but of course we've got five no. weeks on the course anyway. Yeah. Uh, the first I thing, guess, I mean, the fact is that not everybody who's with us today is going to. Um, no, no, exactly, and this is just like an overview. Yeah, of course, yeah, 
Yeah. Um, OK, yeah. the first thing about questioning is the gentle approach. And this is really comes out of what we were talking about before. We really want to avoid at all costs re-traumatizing the person. And I found mm -hmm. that the clean language techniques that I've learned from Nick Pohl are very good for that because mm -hmm. they're a very gentle and somatic based approach to questioning. And I've mentioned them here wow. in questioning. Right. Clean questions. Um, we've also we got. To... Mm -hmm. Go on. Yeah, but I mean, we'll, we so something we can't go into now, but they're basically a kind no, of Zen no. approach to mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the whole idea of scanning, sensing the key and feeling the atmosphere. And this is the, uh, the, the technique that I prefer to do rather than digging, you know, trying to, to get uh, to run the risk of re-traumatizing by going somatically back into it. It's really a very gentle approach where you just get it's almost like just the atmosphere, the hint of it which will allow you to access the field and that for me allows you to then use scanning and hara techniques to right. to get a clearer diagnosis yeah um, have you got something else or is that the bottom of the list i don't know let's see yeah. nope that's it <laughs> oh, <that's it>. yeah <laughs> the can next thing was back? yeah i can look there we go <laughs> no, because, um, there was this there was this question that just went back about risking re-traumatizing and all this thing yes and that's I, right I think there is there is time to just for um for example I, uh, just as it happens, I was talking to somebody um, through a Skype connection yesterday who's contacted me about a workshop and um, he told me that he remembers um, the shock and trauma, or, or it was a kind of workshop on latent shock that I offered in Kiental. Um, oh yes, yes. About four years ago, um, yeah. which ironically I presented on emerging from 24 hours in hospital, <laughs> a, a, big, a big lesson for me. But, um, we used something very similar to what you've just done in miniature, which was to use um, a kind of pens and crayons and, and sort of um, diagrams and pictures to yeah. let people go back in their lives to certain events. And I just gave people free reign and whatnot. And the comment, um, I don't want to go into any of the detail, but it is interesting that this man told me yesterday he said he remembers that he he enjoyed the workshop and felt it was very productive. Yeah. It, apparently, it developed uh, it 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 um it produced a reaction in quite a high number of people that wasn't recognised until the next day when people sort of talked about why they hadn't attended one or two of the workshops on the following day because they felt too moved or, or upset even or, or sick even I don't know what that's um, yes and there's another example of how in a short time um, even a workshop situation and I have done you know I've experienced workshops where this is the theme um, yes one one needs to approach all this with great care absolutely and yeah in my in my um, article which I think you have you put on as a resource for the I will uh, I will do that yeah we'll put that on for, yes for the course, right. definitely well, yeah. one of the things that I mentioned in there which I think is relevant to this particular moment is this thing you've put sensing the key and feeling the atmosphere and the gentle approach the first and the last thing on the list yes one thing that I feel is that um, we as therapists we need to be very careful about um, doing uh, doing anything to as it were to look for shock I think yes. we can sense that there may be shock. Yes. But I think we should be really careful as therapists um, not to feel that um, we need to, once that's recognised, to to push anything, especially in any no. given direction. Only no. to recognise in ourselves is probably the, the the most safe and secure thing that the therapist can do. Ah, there's shock present here. I feel this. I recognise it. But you don't. I don't think it's necessary to even start um, presenting to the person straight away that you recognise that condition in them. No, that's because right. That I... could be precisely the thing that pushes people away or into a panic. So I think we Absolutely. need to be very cool. You know. Yes. And I, I like it that you know this thing about feeling the atmosphere and taking a very gentle approach is is critical for me that we we don't go looking to resolve people's shock problem because they're the only ones who can resolve it anyway. Yeah. But, um, if I could just permit me one more observation. Yes. So yeah, in a course, in, a, in a, a little seminar or webinar that we're doing like this, um, I think a message um, that I'd like to send um, is that uh, the best thing that we can do in order to help our clients through, which may be a quite a, high, a, a, a startling high percentage of people who come to see us, um, there have been various figures about that, but uh, the best thing that we can all do is 
look at our own situation and our own background and see with a little gentleness towards ourselves and a little sensitivity things like we can discover to what extent we are carrying unresolved or, or latent shock and little by little the, if we can deal with that ourselves we will become much safer practitioners um, yeah. just holding the ground just staying in horror and not getting involved in in these quite contagious shock patterns yes absolutely will yeah. present to us you know in yep. all sorts of ways that's the whole theme of self-development, isn't it? The whole theme of self-development is even more important when you start working, you know. Yeah. yeah I've got some more. Got some more. We can, if we think we can help other people without we including ourselves, and this is a very pertinent example, I think, of that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Cliff, I'm over. Okay. We've got some, we've got some more questions which I'll deal with in a minute because they're all they're streaming. We've got a very very active group today. Um, well, we've also only got 15 minutes left, and we've got quite a few more slides. So I just want to mention that um, we have got a temporal scanning technique, which is another very very gentle way of just uh, accessing the information in the energetic field, which we'd like to share with you on the course. And what it's like, if you've ever done any scanning work before, like whole body scanning or anything like that, which is basically tuning into the energetic field, um, one of the more advanced techniques allows us to kind of take a temporal approach to that. And that can be, I found that very effective. Um, it's it's like a body scan, but we can scan, scan back in time. And we can also start to access Kyo and Jitsu in the um, uh, Kyojitsu information about events that have happened in the past, and I've, I found that particularly useful as part of the whole diagnosis thing. So it's something we can deal with more. That in, in fact, the Hara um, has a sort of a, a live field sensor and kind of would change in response to um, different, uh, e even subliminal or unconscious exactly, uh, yeah. events that are beginning to register in the field. That's so exactly it. Yeah. We'll show it. Um, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Show it in the present, even though there's a feeling around um, something that might have happened in the past that may at, the, at that time not be fully recognised by the Yeah, time. exactly. It may not even be recognised by us in any detail. No, it's that's key. right. And that's yeah. the. I think that's for me. That's the most brilliant thing about shiatsu because it. The thing that I find, and I've dealt with, I have treated quite a number of very seriously traumatised people with shiatsu, and they've benefited mm. from it. And I think one of the mm. main reasons is precisely because. It's not a requirement to bring into the cognitive awareness the process. It's an actually a somatic-based technique, an exactly. energy-based technique. Exactly. And you it's avoid... Not like, um, analytical in the sense of... No, that's uh, right. And that's one of its big strengths, mm -hmm. I think. And, and it, mm -hmm. you know, it really mm -hmm. does minimise any, any chance of um, re-traumatising. OK, we've got... Yeah. Um, oh, question. we've got Sarah. Sarah has asked us... This is slightly off topic, but... Um, it's a bit more extreme. She says that in war-torn air is experiencing trauma and shock whilst under attack, how to treat. That reminds me a bit of Diego's seminar that he did about working at 9-11, didn't we? In fact, the seminars, mm. that's right, mm. yeah. Mm. If you want to check out that that webinar, it's on YouTube, actually. It's on Shatsy's. If you go to shatsyspace.net, that's available, isn't it? Yeah. So you might mm. want to have a look at that. He's had a lot of experience of working like that, uh, Sarah. But the principles are the same. They're just more extreme, obviously. Um, I think, um, I, I mean, I think when you're dealing with people um, in, in in the immediate vicinity of shocking um, yes. and traumatizing context, I mean, um, at least at that point, I mean, who knows how effective we can be, but I think human, uh, you know, the whole thing of just having uh, any bodywork therapy available, yeah. giving us the opportunity to give sort of what we, we might hope would be unconditional attention with yes. hands and with, with our senses uh, during a period of time if we can seek, if we feel that the treatment space is secure at least absolutely yeah then, um, you know and that may not be guaranteed of course but uh, um, I think that trauma is everywhere and um, but at least if you're if you're in it then there's no disguising it so the best we can offer to somebody is our is our attention and our skill what more can we do? Um, we may be feeling a bit stressed ourselves if we're really working close to a zone like that. As I said, yes. it's all contagious. It's all it, it's all very challenging. I think I think there's no escape from the fact that uh, 
this whole question is extremely challenging to us just as human beings. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But I must it's say, Diego, on. Diego does, did have some very good results, didn't he? Really good results. And it's interesting to see yes, his experience. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think it's immensely powerful to be able to offer people um, a, a, this kind of non-verbal, fully conscious and, and, and physical contact as well as, uh, you know, energetic, physical. It is very powerful in itself. Yes. Um, okay. How about doing some? How about some theory? For we've only got we've only got ten yeah. minutes left. I mean, we, we can yeah. maybe just touch on a few things here. Um, but yeah. what I've done here is I've just looked at the mo at the most, um, from my experience anyway, the most common uh, relationships between um, shiatsu and TCM theory and the different mm -hmm. stages of trauma response. Mm -hmm. And I must say, mm -hmm. I found TCM and the whole TCM model very very helpful. Um, I think it in is the way, very good. Yeah. You know yeah. the way it kind of dovetails with with um, with with how this work how it works obviously mm -hmm. we've discussed fight and flight and the adrenal response and we've talked about the kidney uh yang we've talked about the freeze response the heart connection um and mm -hmm. dissociation we've talked about shen disturbances maybe we could go on now and just talk a little bit about um liver discharge because for me i think that's an important a port, important one and it links with one of the questions we've had um which is oh I think we've got a I think we've got a poll on this just to get a bit of interaction. Let's have a look. Mm. I'm sure I've done. Um, yeah okay. Uh, how about this one? This one. Um, yeah okay. How about you reflect? How about everyone reflecting on their uh, practice and just seeing how many of the or uh, any of these that you've experienced? Okay, you have to only no select way. one. I'm afraid. But just uh, perhaps pick the one that you've experienced the most. And then we can just get a bit of interaction on here. Yeah. All right, we've got quite a few people have actually experienced the shaking, the crying and the shaking response. Have you got the you know, the results on? Uh, then it, we just uh, people are still voting. Yeah. We we can yeah. still yeah we can still we can still see oh, yeah. So far we've got hypervigilance is the is the pop, most popular one that, that everyone's experienced. Yeah. yeah yeah. Any more people want to vote? We've got be... seventy eighty percent. We've got eighty percent. Still a few more coming in. The reason I thought I'd uh, launch that poll now, Paul, is because um, Marcus has asked. Um, he's asked. Look here we go. Here's the results. She could right. just publish them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, hypervigilance, not being able to relax is by far the most. But quite a lot of people have actually experienced the discharging in mm -hmm. the in the session. And that and the reason I wanted to mention that was it can actually be quite if you don't know what's happening, it can be quite a frightening thing, especially if you get the very, very violent very shaking. Scary. Yeah, um, and absolutely. and being able, being able to understand what's going on and understand it as a natural mm. discharge, I think, will certainly absolutely help me no end um, as a therapist mm. to be able to really understand it and explain what's happening to my clients mm. and also to be able to, like you say, stay in my own centre when it happened. Mm. Um, Something, um, I, I mean, I, I have a, a comment or two to make about that, which is yeah. um, I think that there's, there's a natural sequence of these things. And it yes. used to puzzle me because uh, years back, it's another thing that I describe in, in this article that I mentioned, but uh, yeah. I give some examples at the end of, of how I experienced these different things in the clinic and, you know, like case studies of how people responded and, and blah, which includes some of these things. Um, yes. But one of my first encounters with all this was not as a shiatsu therapist, really, because I think um, uh, not everybody would know, but I um, had a long period um early period in, of um, studying acupuncture and going into clinical practice in that respect and it wasn't until later that I got my shiatsu up to speed as it were and, yeah. uh, and then ran the two things together. But um, what was interesting was that even in the early days when I was studying there used to be a phenomenon that we sometimes saw in clients, it wasn't that common but it did happen even with my, my teachers and, the, and uh, you know the founder of the college, we used to do clinical work and this thing would happen where people would go into a shaking, sort of like their, their jaws would shake often, first of all, would begin in the head, in the jaw, or, or then the whole body sometimes. And yes. Have this. And they used to call it needle shock. Needle and shock? They, they called it needle oh. shock. 
Wow. And, and, and so, I just, you know, at that stage, I just went along with it, Cliff, you know, because yes. I was learning and didn't know. And it happened. And then once, uh, of course, it happened for the first time to me. And then uh, the, the thing you were supposed to do is take out the needles that you put in yeah. and, uh, and calm the person down and sort of, you know, but really withdraw the needles. Yes. And, and then even perhaps put one needle or press stomach 36 or yes. kidney one. So these were the kind of response. Anyway, yes. it happened a few times. And as I went on with my training and kind of began to practice in my own right in the college clinic as well, I started to feel that this wasn't right. I began to feel that, there were, that it wasn't needle shot. In other words, that it wasn't the practitioner or the, or the experience of the acupuncture in itself no. that was responsible for this shaking, but it wasn't given to us like that at the time, which of course is 35, 40 years ago now, you know what I mean? Was, uh, um, and I began to feeling rather sort of uh, nervous, but in myself, because it is a nervy thing, it's contagious, yes. as I said, but I Absolutely. began to feel that I shouldn't take the needles out and that I should just leave them in, as if, because, uh, because the idea of withdrawing the needles is to say, oh, we've done something to you, that's um, you know that's caused this. Yes, so you take absolutely. The, the practitioner takes yes. the responsibility. But what I noticed is that there were plenty of people who had experience of needling. In other words, people didn't go into this needle shop the very first time they came, or the second time even. No. And sometimes people had actually been receiving acupuncture quite comfortably for some time, and then it would happen. So I think that what we just to translate that straight into the shiatsu experience. Yes. The first thing we're going to find is that people are, are hyper alert and defensive about yes. you know people who've got shock states unconsciously there to Absolutely. protect. Yes. As they begin to go into a more relaxed and trusting state with the with us, with the practitioners, yes. they, then their system will change and then something will come out which yes. may be um, they somatize in a different way from before. Yes. That's and exactly at that it. point is what we're doing, what we need to recognize, I, um, I quoted the acupuncture, because you can think of needles as being more shocking to receive. Yes. Shiatsu, shiatsu by and large, if it's respectfully given and we're well trained and everything, that what's the problem? And people often, I had people who were receiving shiatsu from me in clinic, and then they would begin to go weird or feel <laughs> this, this strange shape, you know, the shaking yes, or something. Yes, absolutely, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then they'd say, well, what's going on? I don't recognize it. No, because that's, that's the strange thing about it. It's a completely involuntary thing that comes out of somewhere else. It just comes out. Sound. Comes yes, out. absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. And, and so what we mustn't do is think, oh, I've done something wrong. Oh, I've got, you know, we but, need to just stay absolutely. there. Absolutely, right. and I agree with that That's totally, yeah. Say, really. Very good yeah. advice, Paul. We've actually only got a couple of minutes left now, unfortunately. The time has absolutely flown. I don't know where the hour's gone. It's unbelievable. And I've just it's put up it's one of the... It's, it's a fa fascinating yeah. thing, isn't it? Um, mm. Yeah, so I've got another slide up, which is the treatment slide, and you can see some yeah, of the some of the things yeah. we're going to go into in the course, and you can probably guess some of them already from what we've been saying. But also, it's interesting to look at some of the actions of the acupuncture points as well, which we will do in more detail on the course. Yeah, so. they're all they're all good, aren't they? I think I think yeah. basically those things are there for people to look at. Everybody here is, um, you know, probably studied. Most people have studied the. Um, the traditional Chinese medicine or shiatsu theory. So the whole thing about you know the traditional points, the heart sevens, the stomach thirty sixes, the liver yes. threes, and the kidney ones. I don't think. I mean, you put them up. I think it's good to acknowledge that these resources are there. Yes. Um, so we simply need to adapt our shiatsu to what's coming up at the time. Absolutely. And quietly, yeah. Just quietly get on with it because you know, yeah. people are going to go through it themselves. And yeah, we have right. things that we can offer. That's it, that's it isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You've and got, look, you've got, yeah, here we are. What here we are. Here's putting putting it together. This is the final slide. Well, not almost the final slide. We've got one just one minute mm -hmm. to run. Um, yeah, this is a kind of workflow that we'll get towards the end of the course, which is detecting the trauma symptoms, which we've gone into quite a lot of detail in the webinar, asking the clean questions gently into the somatics, keeping uh, you know, safe space, allow, um, mm. minimizing any re-traumatizing effect. Um, and then we can use timeline temporal scanning, more advanced scanning techniques, 
uh, getting into the higher diagnosis, we can understand the dominant trauma response, which is which is what we've just been discussing. And Paul's been you exactly. know, really helping mm -hmm. how we can you know really help that. And then of course using points and kyojitsu and points. Okay, I've got to finish exactly. up now. I've got to finish up. Um, it's half past eight. Thank you so much, Paul, for. Um, joining us all the way from Tenerife, yeah, and thanks, thanks for very doing much. the homework, Cliff, because you know, <laughs> I, do, I do really respect that something set up in such a well-organised way, that makes it all possible. Thank thanks. you very much, yeah, thank you. And thank you more, um, most of all to all of those um, people who registered. We had 120 people, 25 people register, which is a record for us, I think, and we had most of those turn up. Oh, we've yeah, only got, uh, Shakur has been taking bookings as the webinars progress. And we've now only got four places left on the online course. We only have a maximum of 12 students because we found that's the optimum number to um, yeah. for everyone to get uh, really good um, support from the peers and from the from the tutors. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in joining us, if you want one of those, if you'd like to join us on one of those four remaining places, then just uh, email Shakura at admin at newenergywork.com. It starts at nine o'clock this Wednesday. And I just want to say thank you very much for attending this webinar, especially for, for yes. the majority of you. Who's, it's your first event. I really hope you've you know enjoyed it. It's been really great um, being with you, and it's yes, just a great very feeling. Much. Thanks for your interest. It's it's a very interesting topic, and, and it's it's good to have you on board. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you very much. I'm going to end the webinar. Thank you very much. Bye, Cliff. Yeah, bye, Paul. Thanks ever so much. Bye, everybody. Yeah, bye, bye. bye.